Right now in the Michigan Football Report, we're going to take you over some recruiting rumors and a little bit of news, tell you what's out there this week as Michigan finally is allowing recruits on campus after not having any of the last two weeks because mostly of the suspended coaches, Jim Harbaugh, Sean Moore, and more. We've also got some new depth chart changes, offensive line, how about backup quarterback, plus my, miss it, my message to Michigan football students. You better listen up, Michigan football students, because I have a message for you. Make sure you guys, student or not, are subscribed to the Michigan Football Report as we have surpassed 27,450 subscribers. Just on that number exactly, if uh, you would believe it. 555 of you have subscribed this month in September so far through 12 days. What do you get for subscribing? Free content every day and live shows every single week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. We have a great show for you coming up. It's the Michigan Football Report. Let's go. All right, I'm going to start off today's show talking about the new quarterback depth chart. Seems like there was a little bit of uh, you know, miscommunication between Jim Harbaugh and Mike Hart, Sean Moore, uh, Jay Harbaugh, just everybody who was in the head coaching rooms leading up to the second game and who the backup and third string quarterback actually were on this team. Uh, looks like they put in the wrong man, believe it or not. Next, I will talk to you right after that about the offensive line, the depth chart, right? Things moved around. Carson Barnhart, one side. Ladarius Henderson's back up. Then Miles Hitton comes out of nowhere. Trent A. Jones, what is the depth chart on this team as we move forward into the final game of the non-conference schedule, out-of-conference schedule, before Michigan starts off the Big Ten season next week against Rutgers. Jim Harbaugh addressed the media. He said, this week you'll see it'll be J.J., of course, J.J. McCarthy, and if we go to a backup quarterback, which they better, going the, against Bowling Green, it'll be Denegal and Alex Orgy. So if you didn't see last week, uh, Michigan started the game with J.J. McCarthy, of course, and then uh, Jack Tuttle, and then uh, Davis Warren came in, and then Jaden Denegal was in there, you know, around there. Apparently, Denegal was supposed to be the, uh, the backup to McCarthy. He was supposed to be the first guy in, and Alex Orgy was actually supposed to be the second guy in, but maybe Michigan was using their quarterback depth chart from uh, from the first game. So this is the new expected quarterback depth chart heading into the third game of the season. For me, this just feels like a better plan for the future. Jack Tuttle, a six-year guy, he's not going to be playing for this team next year. Davis Warren, I mean, outside of last year, Hawaii game, a couple throws, I'm not sure if you can say that he is a quarterback in a Big Ten offense, especially one that could potentially next year be coming up three straight Big Ten champions championships and be the defending national champion. So this feels like to me a better plan for the future. If J.J. McCarthy's gone this year, I think you've got to be looking to Jaden Denegal uh, or Alex Orgy to be your next starting quarterback if it is not Jaden Davis as a true freshman next year or Michigan's got to be looking at the transfer portal. It just can't be Davis Warren. Of course, Jack Tuttle. I think he's out of eligibility. This is six years, so he should be. But that is what you can expect. Michigan's redshirt freshman and sophomore quarterbacks, both a member of the 2022 class, they will be the second and third stringers. Harbaugh didn't really allude to which order. We're going to take Denegal as the backup, given he went into the game first last week. I'm going to ask you guys this question. Given the focus on the passing game and even some of the struggles in the running game so far this year, make a prediction for me. Will Michigan have more yards this week passing or rushing? Now, why do I ask you this question? Well, last year early on, it was almost rushing every single game, right? There's only actually a few games all of last season where Michigan had more passing games than rushing. But First two games, really quick note here. Passing, 280 against East Carolina. Rushing, only 122. Next game, UNLV. These are games under Jim Harbaugh. Michigan usually runs the ball 3-1 to one yardage, or 2-1 to one at least. Uh, last week, 313 yards passing. 179 yards rushing last week against UNLV. So it's almost 2-1 to one passing over these first two games. Let me know down in the comments. Give me an answer. Passing or rushing more yards this week. We will be live tomorrow, Wednesday, if you're watching on Wednesday, t today, 3 o'clock Eastern. Set your alarms, set your notifications, subscribe to the channel. We will have our Michigan Bowling Green preview, some injury news and inside rumors, uh, a little bit of game plan change with uh, Sheryl Moore being the head coach this week, and, uh, and more. Take your question. The Michigan Football Report joins us live Wednesday, 3 o'clock Eastern. Speaking of Sheryl Moore, he's been doing a little talking out there. He got suspended. He watched the... Uh, the first game with Jim Harbaugh. Funny enough, Jack, Jim Harbaugh was raving about the sandwiches that Jerome Moore's wife uh, 
serve for the opener against East Carolina. Watched the game at her house with Sharon and, and his wife. More outer today. He said, uh, he said, those weren't my wife's sandwiches. Those were Panera. Those are sandwiches from Panera. She's trying to take credit for them. Jim's just being nice. So I'm not sure if that's doing well for his marriage. Also said this, these five guys have shown to be the best five, so we'll continue to work and see who's the best five is this week and next week and the next week. But the greater scope of that context was around asking, are these the five you're going with? It's in back-to-back weeks. This is your starting offensive line. Carson Barnhart, Trevor Keegan, Drake Nugent, Zach Zinter, the All-American himself, and Miles Hinton, whose brother Chris uh, caught on with an NFL roster. I think he's in the Cardinal this year. I didn't think Miles Hinton was going to crack the starting lineup for Michigan. He proved me wrong. Beat out Ladarius Henderson. Beat out Trent A. Jones. I think he's struggling a little bit, but as of now, he started the first two games for this team, a national championship level team, in my opinion, and has, uh, you know, uh, first dibs on keeping that job going forward. Coming up, I'm going to tell you the latest on recruiting. All right, who's visiting this week? As I mentioned earlier in the show, Michigan's finally having on campus visitors after not doing it the first two weeks. Night game at the big house, Michigan Bowling Green. We'll have a couple uh, committed recruits on campus. And we've got a recruiting decommitment I want to talk about as well. But right now, this message is for the University of Michigan student, the University of Michigan student who attends football games. You guys listen up right now, because what we're about to show you, this, this is unacceptable. Look at this right here. Look at this right here. Look at this. What are we doing here? This is a picture five minutes before the game started this past week against UNLV. And you guys probably watched the show. If you watched the show for a couple of years, I said the same thing in 2021 that I am about to say now. I understand if you're a college football student that you don't want to sit around for four hours on a Saturday morning. You might have been out late the night before, but this is Michigan, okay? Michigan in the midst of a three-year run that most college football college students would be wildly envious, and not just at other schools, okay? Not just at Michigan State or Minnesota or Wisconsin. I'm talking about your forefathers, a class or two before you, at the University of Michigan. Think about if you were a graduate in 2021, you missed the Big Ten Championship that fall. Your last season was two and four. They would kill to be in that student section. They'd do anything to be in that student section. And this student section, for back-to-back weeks, has shown up in the middle of the first quarter, but by the end of the second quarter, it's back down dispersing, and hell, by the fourth quarter, it's 20% left. This isn't some West Coast school, Stanford, like Drake Nugent and, and uh, Miles Hinton are used to, where the students don't show up. This is the University of Michigan. You say, well, James, I want to go back to the frat party. I've got girls I want to talk to. I want to have some fun. The game's a blowout that's boring. That's fine. You only get six, seven, eight home games a year. The partying can wait till 3 o'clock. It's still going to be there. But better yet, the University of Michigan doesn't have the best security in and around that stadium. So I'm going to give you guys a little tip as students. If you want to keep the party going, get your ass in the game. Take a bottle of Jack. Go to the liquor store. They sell the bottles of Jack Daniels, the plastic bottles. Wear a small coat over yourself, a sweatshirt. Stick it in your front pants. Nobody can tell. You want to do drugs? Take the drugs into you with the game. You want to hook up with that hottie from Alpha Chi Lambda? Hit her up at the game, go see the shirt. Just start making out the game if that's what you want to do. But stay at the damn game because all these other schools, you know, I think it's always been something that's made Michigan special is the student section doing all the waves and everyone's wearing the same colors. Everything's in unison. Stay at the damn game. Take the booze into the game. Drink it. Throw the bottle over your head if you have. It's a plastic bottle. Don't hurt anybody. It's a lawless environment at Michigan Stadium. Once you're in, you are in. There is no rules, so get your ass in the game. All those activities you're going to do, I know you're not studying at 2.30, 2.45 on a, on a Saturday afternoon. Do all those fun things. Keep the frat party going. Just stay in the stadium till the end of the game. Because I'll tell you what, two, three years from now, you're not at the game, you're going to wish you were in that student section and having that kind of fun. And if you're there in a couple years, if you're a freshman, sophomore, let's say Michigan's not a championship team in a couple years, you're definitely going to say, I wish I would spent more time at the stadium basking in that championship level team that we had just a couple years ago. So keep your ass in the seats, Michigan football, or Michigan, University of Michigan students for these Michigan football games. Speaking of games, it's a night game. So I don't know what to expect, right? You got all day to do all the partying, sneak the booze in. Michigan's favored by 40 and a half points against Bowling Green. Former Michigan quarterback coach, uh, the guy Tom Brady, you know, has raved about Scott Leffler, you know, his time for Michigan. They were classmates, and then Leffler uh, injured out of football, became a GA. 
worked with Brady, then became Michigan's quarterback's coach before moving on to multiple places uh, after Michigan, now head coach of Bowling Green for the past few years. 53 and a half is the over-under. So, I mean, look, Michigan's favored to win by six touchdowns. If Bowling Green scores 10 points, we might have some issues in this one. I'm down 200 bucks on Michigan this year. I'm going to wager wage it all this week on Michigan with BetUS, trying to win my 200 back in one bet. If you guys get started with BetUS, our preferred sports book, it's the last week we're doing this in September. 125% deposit bonus, boom, big time deposit bonus. That's not at all. Once you make your first deposit, go make a bet. You get 125% deposit bonus. As long as you put in $100 or more, right? That's the minimum deposit to get this promotion. You make your first bet, email us, jersey at chatsports.com, and we here at Chat Sports, we will send you a Michigan football Jordan brand number one blue jersey. So, hell of a deal. Put some money on Michigan. I mean, look, I haven't been doing good winning Michigan. They were covering the spread in the first half, maybe, but uh, not for the game, which is a little bit rare. Only scoring in the 30s these first two games last year was like 59 nothing, 51 to seven, all this different stuff. Not to run the score up this year just yet. So we're gonna start with Bet US. Get yourself a jersey. Get yourself a deposit bonus. Promo is ending this week. Uh, in the month of September. So take advantage now and then email us, jersey at chatsports.com. First time customers only, and you got to use that link. Don't just type in BetUS. Type in that link right there so we can track your uh, account to this promotion. All right. What else we got to talk about here today? We got some recruiting news and rumors, just some kind of housekeeping items around recruiting. Is It's really been uh, not much happening in recruiting over the past three or four weeks. Number one, Jordan Marshall. Okay. Top 100 player in the country, running back out of the state of Ohio, uh, spurned Ohio State for Michigan. Uh, one of the jewels of this Michigan football class, I think him and Jaden Davis on the offensive side of the ball, he will be in Ann Arbor on Saturday night, one of two prospects and two committed prospects that will be in there. Davis, I'm sorry, Marshall right now is ranked the number 74 player, regardless of position uh, overall in the 2024 class, according to the 24-7 sports composite ranking that puts them all together. He will be joined by fellow Ohioan, Avon, Ohio, kind of you know, 45 minutes outside of Cleveland, whereas Marshall is from the Cincinnati area. Luke Hamilton, been committed to Michigan for a while, number 360 overall in the 24-7 sports composite. He is uh, himself an offensive lineman. Those two committed Ohio State players will be in town. So students, show them some love. You see them. Make sure they think, hey, these are going to be my future classmates. Make it a ruckus atmosphere under the lights. Always fun to have a game under the lights, although maybe a little bit more fun when you get a win over somebody like Notre Dame rather than Bowling Green, but I digress. The 2025 class has themselves a D commitment, a D commitment, and frankly to me, it's not that surprising, which I'll tell you about in just a second, but I will remind you what we started off at the top of the show is we're 27,450 subscribers to the channel. It's free to subscribe. You get free videos every day, live videos, the fastest post-game show in all of college football right here in the channel, and we are at 555 subscribers this month. I don't know if we've ever got 1,000 new subscribers in one month, but we're on pace as of right now. So hit that subscribe button. Send a link to a friend. It's youtube.com slash Michigan TV. I'm sure you've heard this name, but, you know, 2025 guy, junior, been committed. Montrez Walker, the linebacker. Well, he decommitted, and this is the least surprising uh, thing ever, right? Uh, 2025 class now, Montrez Walker. He basically says, first off, thank Michigan staff, yada, yada, yada. He's going to explore my options. He's decommitting. He put this quote out on his Twitter account last night. So 25, 25 class, got a decommitment. Okay, right. They're three or four weeks into their junior year of high school. I mean, that seems like an eternity to a kid in, uh, in high school. I think that this, you know, in general, this isn't surprising. Okay. I think the thing that football fans need to realize is when I saw this was tweeted out what, last night or early today, it was last night, I believe it was, um, I was like, yeah, okay, cool, whatever. It's not like I was like, oh, my gosh, so we're losing this crazy generational player because I never expected him to be a part of this class. Look, when you were a player of a high school football recruit, basketball recruit, maybe basketball is a little different, but football, in the South, look back historically. I mean, Michigan, just Michigan alone has had dozens of these over the last 20 years. Kid commits summer before his junior year, spring of his sophomore year of high school. Ooh, Wow, we got this four-star linebacker, top 150 player, or this wide receiver from Florida, or we got this uh, this offensive lineman from Tennessee, et cetera, or Alabama. Right? They almost never stick with their their commitment, right? Um, I am in the state of Texas. That's where I live now. People just don't talk about 
Notre Dame football in Texas. If you're in the state of Florida, not many people are talking about Michigan unless they're just huge college football fans. But they're more talking about, oh, what's, what are the Gators up to? Maybe what's Alabama? What's Georgia up to? And so that kind of, you know, weighs on a, uh, a recruit after a couple years. His friends start going to different places. He sees them on TV more, all those different things. So I'm not surprised by this at all. It's just recruiting re reality. If a player from Florida or Alabama or Georgia or Tennessee or South Carolina is going to end up in Michigan, or Texas even, is going to end up in Michigan, usually it's the player that commits about a month or less prior to signing day. He doesn't have a ton of time to rethink his decision. He ends up there, but still you run the risk of uh, him eventually being a flight risk and uh, transferring after a year or two regardless. So not surprising at all. Uh, Montrez Walker, linebacker, dropped down to a three-star, so he's not as highly recruited as when he committed to Michigan originally. He is uh, now no longer going to be a part of this class. I don't expect him to be, uh, you know, change his mind and come back to Michigan by any means. So I'd ask you guys this question, given that I just went on a little recruiting rant there on Montrez Walker. Who is the recruit? Name me the recruit you followed the closest over the years. And I'm not talking about once they got to Michigan, he kept following them. I'm still following him. He's in the NFL now. I'm talking about you heard about this kid, you saw him, you hope Michigan got him, you followed the saga the entire way. Maybe he committed early and you followed him through, um, or he went right up to signing day, whichever one. I can think of two or three right off the top of my head. A um, couple that Michigan didn't get from 15 plus years ago when I think recruiting was still a lot more enjoyable to, to, to follow because, you know, there wasn't Twitter. Guys couldn't just speak. You had to go through services. Everything was super secretive and stuff. Justin King, right, uh, Penn State, I believe it was the 2004 or 2005 class, um, spurned Michigan, went to Penn State. Uh, Ronald Johnson, five-star, top 10 player in the country out of the state of Michigan, I think it was the 2007 class, uh, ended up going to UN, uh, USC and then being a wide receiver for them, but I don't think had much more than a practice squad opportunity or two in the NFL. Those are probably the two biggest that I remember that I was kind of like, ah, I can't believe this guy's not coming to Michigan. Um, outside of that, I mean, J.J. McCarthy was certainly one. That came out of nowhere, and he was just hoping, even if he got into the 2020 season, that he just doesn't change. He left Illinois, went down to IMG Academy. Michigan falls apart 2-4 and four, uh, in 2020 when he's a senior in high school. So that was one. I actually think the one most recent that was positive for Michigan was Donovan Edwards. Okay, Donovan Edwards. Right up to sign day, decided to uh, to commit to Michigan. So those are my four, two old school ones, two guys who are superstars on the team right now. So let me know which recruit you follow closest, good or bad, over the years for the Michigan football program. If you guys want to support the show, by the way, um, always helps uh, YouTube. YouTube, we're, we're on the internet, right? Everything is tracked these days, so they know when you like the show. And if you like the show, they'll probably say, well, hey, we got some more Michigan fans over here. Maybe they'll like the show, so they'll put this show in the feeds of other Michigan football fans. You can always comment, share your thoughts, build the community, get to know other Michigan football fans, have your voice heard. And of course, if you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to the show or send that link at the bottom of the screen, send it to your friends and uh, and let them have it. So just a little ask there. If you don't want to do anything under that, that's fine too. Don't forget, tomorrow, Wednesday, 3 p.m. Eastern, we will be live for about 90 minutes. Make sure you join us then. Till I see you guys on Wednesday, go blue.